What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And today, it's a little bittersweet for me to say this, but this is going to be my final entry in the experiment that has been Future Gohan. I've been playing this deck exclusively since the release of Set 13 Supreme Rivalry, and it's a mixed bag. It's very 50 50. You know, sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. I've experimented with many different builds, many different cards. And I, I, I really just couldn't quite find it. I feel like this archetype is still missing something. And who knows, maybe down the road we'll get some future support, some legacy support. But I did have fun, you know, playing this deck. It's one of my favorite characters in the entire Dragon Ball franchise. I just hope uh, they don't forget about him, you know, being Bandai. And, you know, maybe get some future support down the road. Um, shout out to the Facebook group. And shout out to uh, my buddy Jacob, who is also an avid future Gohan player. Um, we tried it. And, but now we have to move on to set 14 and so shiny new toys coming out, you know, in mid-August. So um, this build is the final build. Um, it's the most consistent I've gotten in the deck to, to go off, to pilot, you know, to play its consistent, you know, drops and stuff like that. So I feel like I'll share it one last time for those of you who are going to keep the legacy going into set 14. Um, there is a couple of cards that you can probably add from that set into future Gohan, but for the most part... Um, you know, I think I think GT um, SS4 Goku is going to take up that yellow spot, uh, that mantle going into set 14. So, um, real quick shout out to Davidson TCG, my buddy David, for making this custom leader. Uh, if you guys don't know, he's been making really quality uh, custom leaders for a long time now. So, if you're interested in, in getting one of these, just message him on Facebook. Um, Davidson TCG, you can follow his page. My the link will be in the description box down below. Um, I think he's a little backed up on commissions, but I'm pretty sure he's still taking them. So, future Gohan, Sun Gohan, 10k attacker in the front, auto once per turn when you attack, draw a card. Um, and he has a secondary awakening condition where if one of your yellow blocker, if one of your yellow battle cards with blocker were to be KO'd, um, you can burst three, draw two cards, and add cards from your life to your hand until you're at six, flip them over. Um, he also has a, a basic awaken at four, li four or less life, untap one, draw one. And then on the back, he's just, you know, he's a really good leader. So uh, he's auto once per turn, attack, 15k, draw a card. Uh, auto uh, once per turn, when he attacks, you can choose one of your uh, future trunks battle cards. Give it plus 5k and critical for the turn. And then on defense, uh, when your opponent attacks, auto, you can choose one of your future trunks. Uh, switch it to active mode and give it plus 6k for the duration of the turn so good offensive um, skills good defensive skills um, and obviously we're going to go through the deck profile and see now how we can get that in conjunction with uh, the leader real quick uh, i know it's summertime so if you guys are enjoying your vacations or your breaks on a nice sandy beach <laughs> i hope everything is going well for you um, but you know, we're gonna get into this Dragon Ball thing now, all right? So we're playing four of Android 16, a mechanical partner. Uh, the reason I like this guy is because he's essentially a one-drop blocker. I do apologize for the glare. Uh, but he is essentially a one-drop blocker the turn he's played um, until the end of your opponent's turn. So you have the blocker skill active for your opponent's turn in case you need to use it defensively for your awakening condition on your leader. But he also looks at top five for an Android or a Unison with a specified cost of two. So that's really good to help kind of, you know, get your piccolos and stuff like that. This is my um, primary turn one play, uh, whether I'm going first or second. I just like getting a blocker out there on the board just, you know, to make my opponent think twice. Most of the time they do not attack the turn you play this guy because they don't want to give you advantage the whole entire game. But, you know, he basically dodges a, a, a damage there and just gives your opponent something to think about. Uh, we're also playing four of the Pendable Saiyan Trunks. Uh, I had cut this guy down to two, to three. Uh, I think four is the best number because you could play him reactively and proactively. Again, my apologies for the glare. I'll see if I could fix that for you guys. Um, basically, he's your standard, you know, top three for a yellow Saiyan, which there's a lot of targets in this deck, but he does have a lot of synergy playing off of your future Gohan, um, Desperate Last Stand, which we'll get into. Um, <clears throat> and he's also an evolved target for your three drops. So he does grab a good amount of cards in the deck, which is really nice. And I just like having him turn one if I need to. And then my last one drop is going to be Trunks Warrior of Hope. Um, he does nothing uh, <laughs> while he's, um, you know, he doesn't do anything himself. Basically, if he's on the board, he is a unique. So you can only control one per, you know, one at a time. But if he was to see a future Gohan die, 
you can grab a three drop future trunks and evolve on top of him from your deck so it's a nice way to get your chain started he is unique so i only play three if i ever draw this guy i usually put him in energy because i want to grab him from the deck with desperate last stand that's the most uh, you know optimal way of doing it but you kind of need him because if your combo goes off the way you want it to you'll be able to set up nice um you know stalwart boards uh, with your future trunks guys so that's it for the one drops we're playing four of um <clears throat> Let's move this out of the way. Playing four of uh, Sun Gohan, Desperate Last Stand. I really like this guy um, <clears throat> because he's a really good engine starter. My only gripe with him is that he costs two energy. I feel like they tried making the archetype very fair by making him two energy, but I don't see it being a problem for him if he costed one and was a 5k. Like, if his stats were just different and he was a one drop 5k, I would have been completely fine with it, but his, his effect is really, really good. So I'm okay with, because this deck is inherently defensive, I'm okay with tapping two for this guy on turn two. So I don't feel like I'm going to get blown out. So basically, he's a two drop 10k blocker. Uh, auto, when he activates his blocker skill, you can go into your deck and grab a future trunks. Nine times out of ten is going to be this guy. Um, <clears throat> and um, basically, when he activates the blocker skill, you want to grab your warrior of hope. But if he's removed by a, an opponent's skill, he also gets to get one from the deck. But if he's removed by an opponent's skill, you want to grab Dependable Saiyan. Now here's why, let me just move this back up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Here's why you want to do it this way. So <clears throat> when he activates Blocker, you grab Warrior of Hope because the Blocker resolution will resolve before the battle is concluded. So technically, you resolve Blocker, he comes out, now combat, resolves normally he dies while he's on the board so you'll go ahead and get your three drop if he dies from a skill and you grab him because he's dying from the skill he won't see him die so if he dies from a skill you want to grab him because at, at worst you're going to get a search top three off of it so it's nice little different ways of doing it i'm sure if you guys have been playing future gohan you already know those interactions but for the most part you want to grab um warrior of hope off the block because once the blocker dies, essentially, you'll be able to get your three drop. And if you haven't awakened by now, you're doing a lot of different things. You're getting your three drop, you're awakening. This is the turn mostly you're going to awaken. You're going to go from, you know, turn one playing Android 16 and, and nothing happening to turn two, probably awakening with, uh, you know, eight, seven or eight life. So I like him. He's another engine starter, um, which is really important for this deck because the, the future trunks is. Uh, the higher cost ones they do not have unique so you can have multiple of them on the board you know at a time speaking of your first target here uh, we have super saiyan trunks uh, to change the future this guy is your your main guy that you're going to go into most of the time he's 20k barrier blocker um, and he has activate main if you have four energy you can evolve um, not evolve essentially but you can Restand him and then play the a drop on top of him which is really nice because it's a cheap way of getting out the a drop he's also evolved over a yellow future trunks for one so you could just bring him out for one on turn two if you open with dependable saiyan he's a really good card 20k barrier blocker very tough for your opponent to deal with also offensively your leader gives him plus five and crit and defensively your leader makes him a 26k essentially a 30k blocker which is really nice and then your secondary target is um trunks spirit resonance this guy is okay uh, i don't really play him too much but he does have some merit because of his auto so basically his auto is when he's played or used in a combo uh, you can search your deck for a future gohan and add it to your hand so if you don't have a turn one your worst turn one play is going to be to either combo offensively or combo defensively to add your desperate last stand to your hand to get your engine started. So that's the reason I like playing him because he has that versatility. And in the case you ever do get it off, um, he does have a spirit boost effect. Um, when you have three open energy on your opponent's turn, uh, you can spirit boost two when he dies. Basically he is a blocker. So when he would die, you can spirit boost two, tap three yellow energy to play the eight drop from your hand. So you can get the eight drop out a turn earlier. Technically it doesn't happen very often, um, but he's just another 20K swinger. 
Uh, he can also evolve over a future trunks for one yellow and he it, he has deflect so if you're smelling a counterplay coming in you go into this guy instead of this guy he doesn't have the same activate main though so you have to be careful you can't play the eight drop above on this guy for two you'd have to hard evolve it for four so it's just other ways of getting your plays out and just making sure you're as versatile as possible because this deck needs all the help that it can get so I think we've talked enough about the little guys. Let's talk about the big guy here. We have Trunks, um, Might, Born of Hope. He's your eight drop boss monster. It's a 30K double strike, dual attack, barrier blocker. So I like to call him keyword soup because your leader does give him crit as well. So basically he, this is your boss guy. This is the guy you want to get out. He's actually really good just as a standalone battle card. Uh, obviously playing him for two mana is or two energy is really nice. Um, but when he comes out, he causes havoc, right? So you evolve him over a Trunks, you give him crit, and he's swinging 35k double crit, dual attack, so he's going to restand. But the main thing I like about this guy is his activate main. When he's in rest mode, you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards and one of their energy and freeze them. So basically, they won't restand at the start of their next turn. So you kind of time lock them a little bit, which is really nice because he himself is hard to deal with being a 30k barrier. But also in conjunction with the leader, he does restand and get that extra 6k. So he becomes a 36k barrier blocker. I just really like him. I really like the artwork on the guy. I really wish he got an SPR out of the set, but I understand why he didn't. Um, but I, I, I really think um, the, the, the side note here, the good thing about this um, little archetype or this little engine, it's not leader locked. You do not have to play a future Gohan leader. So if you guys find yourselves um, finding a... a um, a strategy that's efficient with just the yellow leader you can go ahead and throw that in there um because i think there is some benefit to playing this guy he's really strong he's a nice finisher on turn four um now we're gonna get into i guess you can call it the meat and potatoes of the deck which is the unison um we're playing four of the piccolo spirit boost defender um i have some mixed feelings about this guy He's definitely not the type of unison that you just want to play, like Windmill Slam on a table. He does have a lot of, um, you know, glaring issues. I mean, he's an 11K. He's He only pluses one, and he has no, like, big ultimate effect. So he's really just there for, like, utility. But the reason I like him is because of his plus one being able to... Basically, what you do is you plus one activate main, and at the start of your opponent's next turn, you, you choose one of your battle cards and it gets to restand. So you can restand your trunks blocker, you can restand your secret rare, which we'll get into at the end of the at the end of the video. And it also gives you the ability to have counterplays live, which we'll get into. Um, uh, and you know, when you do activate spirit boost off of him, basically what happens is you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and negate its skills. Um, for if it's an energy higher. Than its current energy you negate its skills that doesn't come up ever but what i like about him is even though he has a lot of drawbacks he's very sticky because he can plus a marker on either player's turn here's why on your turn actively plus one and then on your opponent's turn when you activate the blocker skill you add a marker to him so he's plusing two every turn so he's gonna stick so i think it's one of the more um, easy unisons to use spirit boost with but just the spirit boost package for future gohan is not that good so i just have him in here just to be my unison to search off of android 16 and because i really like his plus one activate main to restand at yellow battle card but it also gives me access to vegeta prideful transformation the reason this card is good is because it gives you a counterplay live turn two with your unison and it's a blocker so if you haven't awakened yet you put something in rest mode Bring out this blocker you can give him up you know so save yourself some damage and go ahead and start off with your awakening and who doesn't like the spr version of this card it's just so pretty so nice to look at and i have a yellow unison that i could play it with so that's basically my reasoning behind it um i like him a lot you know being able to disrupt your opponent defensively by putting stuff in rest mode is really nice um uh because it also protects your unison. So super combos, we're playing a 2-2 split. We're playing uh, Samasu Sacred Disbelief and we're playing Counter Blast on Gohan. Now the reason I'm doing a 2-2 split is for the simple fact that you awaken with a high life total in this deck, right? <clears throat> so Zamasu is gonna be live pretty much all game and it does work well in conjunction with putting cards into rest mode like Yellow has for basically three formats now, but he doesn't really do much for you later. 
Um, because putting cards in rest mode, yeah, it could be good, but it doesn't really help answer boards. So I tossed around the idea of playing Krillin moments before comeback, but I came to the realization that Counter Blast Sun Gohan is just so much better because he gives you versatility. Not only is he a searchable target off of dependable Saiyan trunks, but he is a one drop, and if he's played, he can put a card in rest mode. He's also a, when you're at four or less, 10k draw super combo, but he also has another auto. If it's your turn and you're at four or less life, you can choose one of your opponent's battle cards that's five or less in rest mode and KO it. So he does give you multiple options on what you want to do. If you want to draw a card, you can draw a card. If you want to KO something, you can KO something. If you want to play it to put something in rest mode and then kill it by super comboing, that's totally fine too. So I like the versatility. I like the fact that he's a searchable super combo. Um, hot take, I think moving forward, searchable super combos are gonna be the way to go, just because it allows you to cycle and filter through your deck a lot more efficiently. Even though the bottom deck draw two super combos are really good for draw power, uh, I think searchable super combos are gonna end up being the way of moving forward, especially because a lot of archetypes have access to that right now. So that's my super combos there. Um, I'm playing, this is a combo that I'm doing. I'm playing two Bardock Father and Sons and two Poutine, the Dark Sorcerer. Uh, the reason I like um, Bardock Father and Son is because it's a free play 15k battle card that puts something into rest mode when you have three energy. This deck doesn't really do a whole lot on turn three, so there's a lot of different ways you can go. So I like playing Bardock in combination with Poutine because he can just come in for free, rest something, and then she comes out for free off the rest. So having a 15k battle card that can start putting pressure is really nice because it's something else that you'll your opponent's going to have to worry about. But it also helps trigger Poutine a lot more easily that you don't have to waste your big power cards like your super combos or your power for super saiyans. And Poutine, you know, even though it's very easy to play around Poutine, it's still something that your opponent has to do to just kind of mitigate that rest. And her skill is also really good when your opponent's being defensive. Because when your opponent activates a counter, you can also activate her ability. So when you have your big boy trunks out and they want to negate that attack, they have to think twice because you're going to be able to put something in rest mode. So I just like having the fact she's a barrier. It's hard to get rid of her. I like that Bardock can trigger her by himself. And it just adds more utility to the deck because I think that's what the deck is lacking because it doesn't have a clear path on what it wants to do besides your 8-drop. So the engine is so small with trunks, you can fit a secondary engine in there. I know a lot of people have been playing um, U9, which unfortunately now we can't because it got banned but also the slug package, which has been successful. Um, but for me, I, I kind of wanted to stray away from that and just try to, try to do as pure a deck as possible while not giving up any competitive edge um, as well. So that's just a little nifty combo that I like to do there. Um, now we're gonna get into like the one ofs. I'm playing one uh, Sun Goku uh, Absolute Annihilation. This guy is just busted. He's a three yellow 20K barrier deflect um that's not what makes him good what makes him good is his permanent states that if your opponent were, were to activate an extra card they'd have to pay an additional energy for it so basically you know when you have a restricted cost or when you have an energy cost for a card you have to add one to it so stuff like you know um what's popular right now power of a super saiyan is very popular power of a super saiyan is free if you have a, an active yellow energy but with him on the board, you have to pay one for it. So it's no longer free. Um, you know, floodgates like Nimbus or Violent Rays or Imposing Presence now are all gonna cost one extra energy because of his permanent. Um, I, I just like, I, I played a lot against a lot of Mecha Freezes and this guy against Mecha Freeza just helps you, you know, kind of recover because they don't get to blow their wad so quickly. And he's a 20k barrier. If you have the Piccolo out on the board, I like to swing with him offensively and then go ahead and restand him with my Piccolo plus one. So it's just another 20k swing. But he's just really nice because it's something to do on turn three. Like I mentioned before, there's not a lot you you have to do on turn three. If you don't get to awaken early and you, you have to do the old fashioned when you're at four or less life awaken, you can play him, awaken on tap one, draw one, and now you have a, a really good utility card out on the board. Uh, that's going to help you, you know, disrupt your opponent. We're playing one Frieza Divine Transformation. Um, I just feel like this is a really good card. He's a nice follow-up to um, Might Born of Hope on turn five. Uh, if your opponent has basically their entire board in rest mode because they tried to kill you, you can just play him, KO everything um, that doesn't have barrier. Um, he's a 25k double strike with deflect, and he's also a blocker, so you know he's going to hit the board. Uh, and at the end of the turn that you play him, you get to restand him, 
and use him as a blocker defensively. He also has um, an auto if your opponent were to activate a counter skill, they have to choose two of their cards and put them to rest mode. So it's one of those things they have to think about defensively if they're not tapped out and they're trying to save that energy for um, you know defense. Uh, these guys in combination are, are, are crazy because you have to pay extra for a negate now and then you have to tap two cards if you want to do it. It's just a nice card to have in conjunction with Trunks. I think um, the 8-drop Kid Goku from set 14 is going to replace him, in my opinion, because he's just a lot better and you can get him out earlier. Um, but I, I like this card a lot. Being a 5k combo is also really nice, too. And then, of course, Bandai didn't uh, get rid of this guy, so we're playing one Surf Retaliation Cooler. Uh, one is fine. You can make the argument for two if you want to be greedy, but I think one is fine because you're going to use this at a pivotal point in the game. This card's just stupid. I mean, it's three energy. It's a counter-counter. There's not a lot of counter-counter in the game. I think, like, the most popular counter-counters in the game are, like, high drops like you have the grade 8 baby and you have your um secret rare boo like boo absorbed janemba he's also a counter counter so there's not a lot in the game uh this guy is the fact that you can just answer baby hatch with him is kind of ridiculous in my opinion and most of the time when you play him you're gonna have six cards that are tapped so you'll be able to draw two so he's essentially a plus one and he stops a counter being a being able to like kind of force your opponent to negate your trunk swing when you have three energy open and slapping this bad boy down is, is just ggs in my opinion because they're going to be actively trying to stop your big attack they're going to have to play into this cooler here um they should have got rid of this card i think bandai dropped the ball by not banning him uh another utility card a secret identity yellow struggles with mass removal uh, I'm not playing the Trunks Unison because I don't want to tap three for him. He's also a pretty good option, but this is a free overrealm um, for six. Uh, it's very easy to get six and drop. Your leader bursts through when you awaken. By then, you're going to have you know five or six and drop anyway. I just like him. He's a 25k pressure. Gets rid of everything that's uh, you know kind of pestering you. Um, just says no to tokens, essentially. And um, if your opponent has any problem cards on the board that you can get rid of, blocker or stuff like that, you just get rid of him with Secret Identity. Uh, one hidden power East Supreme Kai, or this could be for instruction Champa, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, you know, paying one energy to give something double strike is broken. Uh, we've talked about it. I thought this, these cards should have gotten banned, but that's a whole discussion for something that's already happened. So we don't need to get into it, but it didn't get banned. So you play it, you know, you give anything double strike. It could be your mass Saiyan, it could be your cooler. It could be your leader. There's just so many things that you could do. I like to try to get him early because when you swing with your three drop trunks, you give him crit off your leader, making it 25 crit, slap a double strike on it, making it 35 double crit. It's kind of hard to take early. You know, you're talking like turn two, you could do that. So it's kind of hard to take that defensively when your opponent's playing. And then secret rare of choice, we have Sin Shenron, negative energy incarnate. Um, basically, you play him for one in this deck because you get so many one drops in your drop area that you can play him for one. And he's a 35k blocker, essentially. So I like him because you can keep using the blocker skill defensively. He just loses 5k every time he does that. But I like having him because I can swing with him offensively and then uptick my Piccolo unison and restand him on my opponent's turn so I can just use him defensively. His biggest issue is that you really couldn't use him offensively because... You want to have him up for that blocker, but now being able to plus one and restand him with the Piccolo, this is basically a 35k swing. This is 45k double strike for one for two energy. So it's kind of broken in my opinion. And then your my secondary finisher in this deck is um, Vegeta Unison of Fury. This card's actually kind of dumb. I mean, uh, for what it does, I mean, it's two energy. It's a 15k Unison. It's plus one. It technically doesn't have a plus one but it does basically you can choose himself or one of your other uh leader battle cards and switch it to rest mode and give him a marker his minus one states that your opponent cannot attack with battle cards higher than their current energy and his minus three which is what makes him a good finisher in my opinion his minus three is you get plus 5k dual attack double strike and you tap on your opponent's energy so he's basically a 20k dual attack double strike that your opponent really can't interact with because it's a unison so being able to put pressure you know next to trunks because you play trunks on four then you can play this guy on five for for three rest something minus three and then just you have this is double strike dual attack so this is four damage trunks does four damage that's eight damage with two cards it's kind of nuts in my opinion this is gonna be really important in a dark broly matchup i know dark broly got quote unquote hit but it really didn't it's still gonna be a thing so this is gonna be really important against dark broly because you're gonna be able to shut him down kind of 
and he's not going to be able to pressure you so much out of the gate. Also, it's a good secondary unison to search off of Android 16, which is going to turn on your prideful transformations. Um, the last couple cards of the deck, we're playing three power of the Super Saiyan. This card is self-explanatory. Um, this card is busted. Uh, it's just, it's so good. If you have an active yellow, you can play it, activate battle for free, draw one card, uh, and then choose one of your opponent's cards and put it to rest mode. It's just really nice, um, you know, for that yellow synergy of being able to put stuff in rest mode. It's also a one cost in the gate, which a lot of people don't really remember, but this is still a counter. Um, the activate battle you can only use once per turn, but you can use it on either player's turn. So I can offensively rest something and then defensively rest something and draw two. So yellow has always kind of struggled with removal and draw power. This card doesn't remove, but it sets you up for removal in the sense that it's putting something in rest mode for you to swing over it with your big boys. And then the last three cards of the deck, I'm playing three flying nimbus because i do not own uh mecha frieza mechanical repose or whatever his name is uh if you have the mecha frieza's you play them because that card is busted but i like flying nimbus as a floodgate and especially because it's a one drop extra card that will help trigger my sin shenron secret rare uh, but self-explanatory uh, you don't draw a lot in this deck but the cards that you do draw you don't really have to play them because you're playing a lot of stuff from your deck so in a sense you're not drawing you're not drawing to the sense where you have draw power, but you're hoarding your cards. So you kind of always have something live for Nimbus to pitch. And then the fact that it fuels your Sin Shenron Secret Rare is also really nice. Nimbus is still a really good card. Yeah, it sucks with Unisons out now because it doesn't touch Unisons or leaders that can swing twice. But still, it kind of makes your opponent think on what they want to do. And it just gives you that next turn. You, the Nimbus has always been that card that gives you that next turn, which is something that you need when you're playing yellow. So that's basically it, guys. Um, again... I know it's kind of bittersweet uh, that we're saying goodbye to our buddy here, uh, but I haven't actually attended a local in quite some time because I've just been really busy this summer doing stuff with the family, you know, getting stuff ready for the channel, moving into the fall, which is a huge, uh, <laughs> a huge uh, season. You know, everybody goes back to school, so that's kind of when like, the card game season starts up again. Um, but I have been playing, you know, on the side, testing stuff out, and I can honestly say that this build, this is my favorite build. That I've put together in, in the what two or three months that set 13 has been out so uh, give it a try let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below don't forget to like share subscribe and please hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything no counters no combos we really do appreciate the support and we'll see you guys in the next video be there or be squared